Well, hello everyone. Welcome to PBM Bending. So today I want to take a, a different approach and look at the Venstar 3000 machines. My opinion of them has not changed at all. But their functionality, I do want to take a look at. As many of you know, my my uh, training in school was business. I have a business degree. And one of the things that I learned, I don't know if I was taught this or I just learned this, was to constantly reevaluate your position uh, to maximize your profits. Which means don't get into a rut and stay in the rut because times change, people change, wants and needs change. If you can stay on top of that, you will do fine. If you get stuck in a rut, chances are somebody else is going to pass you by because they're open to change. Now, when, we, when I first got into the business a little over a year ago, I did a lot of research on machines, and what I came away learning was the Venstar 3000s were cheap pieces of garbage, but people that were new in the business would use them and uh, for several reasons. Number one, you would get three different types of candy. You could pick up one of these machines used for the price of a sing new single head machine. Um, that was the advantages, okay? It was a, it, they were cheap and you could get in uh, a lot cheaper. The problem with them is because they're all plastic, and I mean all plastic, they, they break constantly. So you have to have the time to replace doors, to tear them apart, to work on them, to have inventory, blah, blah, blah. So I made a decision in the very beginning we were going to have nothing to do with that because what I wanted to do was I wanted to go full bore as quickly as possible and so we were going to use new machines and we did. And it worked very well. Um, we got to a point a month or two ago where I was running short on machines, which was a good thing because that means I was placing them faster than I could afford to pay for them, uh, which means we were growing very well. That's a good thing. Bad thing is I just couldn't afford to go buy all new machines. So I did some research and I found... Uh, a pastor who was selling Venstar 3000 machines uh, and he had a bunch of them for uh, it wasn't cheap but it wasn't expensive it was an okay price and I had to go to a lot of effort to get them blah 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 bottom line and I've done videos on this before bottom line I got 16 uh, Venstar 3000 machines sitting in the middle room in my apartment by the way uh, and I've got probably a half a dozen of the metal machines so uh, I took one of these bad boys apart to reset the wheels because I had one of them placed and oh my lord not only are they cheap and plastic and easy to steal but my lord are they hard to work on I mean, every centimeter has to be exactly perfect. Otherwise, they don't fit together. So you say, well, yeah, but that comes with experience. Okay, I mean, I get it. So, <clears throat> as an example, just taking the back door off to get into the money took me about a half hour to figure out how to do and you say, well, why did it take so long? Well, you can't just sit the door in there, close it, and lock it. You have to sit the door in there, push it in along the top, because it goes in another, you know, eighth of an inch, 
and then you have to come down the sides and then you have to push in the back and then you lock it. I'm telling you, they're hard to work with for me. So <clears throat> then, I, then I thought, well, I'm, I've got 16 of these bad boys. And I never did figure out how to put the doors on. I still don't know how to change the doors. That's one of the things that I know that break on these. So at some point, I'm going to have to learn that. So then I thought, well, did I waste my money on these? And so I, I gave my placement company. I wanted two of them placed. So... The first placement I got was an airport, um, and you would say you 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 would think well that would be a nice place, but uh, I got a really creepy vibe from the guys that ran. It wasn't that the airport it was a Motel Six next to the airport. I got a really creepy vibe from these guys that were foreign. They kept a asking me questions like now this isn't we're not paying for this and I'm not responsible and what if it gets stolen I mean they were asking me all kinds of creepy questions so I thought about it and I thought you know would I rather have them steal one of my nice hundred dollar machines or one of my crappy sixty five dollar machines I decided the crappy $65 Vinstar 3000. So I took the machine and I went to place it and they placed me, they were going to place me next to all the other uh, vending machines, soda machines and snack machines and all that and I said no. And they looked at me and I said there's a door right there with no camera and you can't see it from your desk. This machine will get stolen in a week. So they moved me up to the lobby, which was a good thing, but they kept asking me the same creepy questions. So I decided at that point that the Vinstar 3000 will fulfill a need. And if you've ever placed machines, you know what I'm talking about. You just get a feel when you walk into a place. And you're like, yeah, you know, like if you're in the bad part of town, uh, these instars are so light. I mean, a guy can walk in, lift it up, put it under his arm, and he's gone in 30 seconds, and nobody would know the difference, okay? Now, the metal ones aren't much different, but they are a little different, okay? And not quite so easy. So, I have figured out a niche for there. Now, the next placement I got was an apartment complex. And the machine was going to go into the lobby. Not bad. Problem is, I work in an apartment complex, so I know that the traffic flow into the apartment manager's office is low. And I thought, and, and this particular one is in the bad side of town. So then I was thinking, well, this is a per this is perfect for a Vinstar 3000. Then I thought about it, and I thought, now, wait a minute. No matter how many choices or how cheap the machine, it's in the office. It's pretty secure. So I shouldn't be worried about theft. I need to worry about maximizing the profits from limited traffic. And at that point, I decided to put in a new $100 single head machine and make it a 50 cent uh, gumball machine. So the Vinstar 3000 will not fulfill just a niche. Now, the longer I'm in the business and the more situations I come across, as we sit here right now, I feel like the Vinstar 3000 is going to fill a niche for me. It's not going to be my go-to. It's not going to be my preference. 
it's going to be a machine that I use when I'm unsure um, when I'm running low on machines or when I want to test it but I'm not willing to lose one of my good machines now that sounds very non-conclusive but I feel like again going back to being flexible I feel like each situation that you're in to place a machine you can learn from when I went into the Motel 6 by the airport and, and here's here's a good example that one was out by the airport Motel 6 theoretically a good place but that I know that hotel that hotel has struggled for 20 years longer than that 30 or 40 years uh, and it has always struggled uh, but they have managed to stay open so I'm not concerned about them closing I'm concerned about theft the other places on the other end of town which is where you would normally think about theft but I don't think theft is going to be the problem there I think traffic is going to be the problem there different problems different solutions not one fits all our original game plan was I was going to do everything in single head machines and then the ones that produced well replace them with triple heads and I have done that and that works beautifully the problem is every business and situation is different the Motel 6 at the airport I started out with a uh, triple head simply because I feel like the potential could be there if we get past the theft the potential for the traffic coming through there could be very good for business therefore we need to have a machine that's got three choices but because of the theft uh, model I don't want to lose a lot just on the assumption that the traffic will be good so as we sit here right now and I have a room full of these Venstar 3000s that I hate to work on and I, I'm almost embarrassed to put them in business places but you know they don't know about machines so to them it's a three choices of candy so whatever but I think my thinking is evolutionary on these Venstar 3000s that continues to grow and change and mature I still don't like them they're still hard to work on uh, and I wouldn't pay more than sixty dollars per used Venstar machine I went online the other day and was looking at them uh, a used one will run you a hundred bucks don't do that you can get them on uh, Facebook marketplace for sixty five to a hundred dollars and those are those are steel machines those are good solid machines not these cheap plastic ones so when you're looking do not look on uh, Amazon those are overpriced pieces of plastic um, but I instead of going all in all or nothing I think they serve a function I think they have a place in your vending machine portfolio and I do think they do uh, deserve a consideration depending on circumstances of where you're going to place them and the final consideration I want you to think about is time versus money is what is your time worth my time is very very valuable to me because I don't have a lot of it as long as I've got a couple of steel machines in reserve I am not the first time one of these Venstar 3000s break down I'll just pull the dang thing out throw it in the garbage and put in a steel machine I I mean unless it's something easy peasy that I can deal with I am not going to spend hours figuring out how to fix a $60 piece of plastic that's just not going to happen but they serve a purpose they get me in the door they generate some income for X amount of time and then it's done 
So that's that's my new thinking on the Vinstar 3000. Uh, right below what you think, if you agree or disagree, let me know. I'd be interested in hearing what you have to say. Well, that's about all I wanted to talk about. Uh, you guys have a great week vending and happy vending.